Hello, fiendlings. How the hell are you? I have content. Lots and lots of content. As you may know, I've been working on a new novel in the Suits collection. It's different from Station 3 in the sense that it's more open world, involves some space antics, and a confusing mystery. The Suits aren't nearly as powerful as those in Station 3, and our band of characters have absolutely no combat experience. In short, it's a totally different ballgame. The book, working title of An Ancient Trap, is already past 60,000 words, and I figure I'll have the rough draft probably done by the end of the month or early December. Because I haven't sold this novel, I'm once again podcasting this story exclusively for Patreon, Ko-Fi, and BuyMeACoffee.com subscribers. For $2 a month, you get weekly chapters of the new tale, access to the Black Oceania member-exclusive podcast presentation, and other previously podcasted novels. At the $5 and $10 levels, you get access to advanced reader copies and full unabridged audiobooks, respectively. So what is an ancient trap? Well, here's the synopsis. Engineer Jordan and the crew of the mining vessel Kirkland traveled a year to reach the McCready system. Following a lead from a prospecting satellite, the Kirkland deploys its mining operations on one of the system's three planets. From the moment they begin drilling through McCready's rocky surface and into the veins of precious metals, everything changes. Miners disappear, a disaster threatens the Kirkland, and Jordan finds himself fighting to save both his ship and the miners trapped on the surface of a planet that isn't a planet. Sounds interesting, but you're still not sold? Well, here's the prologue. Prospector 9C512 entered the system weeks ago. The autonomous vehicle found the first three large celestial bodies and quickly discounted them as mere ice giants. It made note of their location, their likely future orbital shifts, if any, possible deleterious effects on the bodies, or simulated collision points, and various other data. Water in the system was abundant. In addition to the three ice giants further in, 9C-512 discovered an entire ice belt orbiting the dying star's outreaches. 9C-512 had been trained to know how precious water was, and that significant sources might mean life of some kind. With that in mind, 9C-512 began scanning for radio signals or signs of artificial power. It discovered thousands of signals originating inside the system. Most appeared to be radiation music cast by the remaining inner planets. In the final stages of its life before it flickered out of existence, the star cast a wan glow over its system. After passing through another 20 million kilometers of space, 9C-512 discovered a trio of objects trapped in the gravity of an unremarkable gas giant. Massive debris fields filled the space between the large planetoids or satellites. Metal, rock, minerals. 9C-512 decided this system, the third it had visited in its 45-year service, was worth exploring. Specifically, the trio orbiting the gas giant. The triplets might once have been identical, but no more. For instance, one of them had obviously taken a hit from an asteroid or some other body, causing it to spin at a dizzying speed. 9C-512 determined the target to be impossible to explore. The second of the triplets was incredibly radioactive, so much so that 9C-512 didn't dare get any closer than necessary to travel to the third object. The third, the prize held a stable orbit, was spherical in nature, and had one-third Earth's gravity. Perfect for exploration, especially after 9C-512 spent weeks aligning itself to orbit the satellite and discovered seven different sites of interest. 9C-512 went into prospecting mode. First order of business? A designation for the object. 9C-512 had already computed the hash based on the object's location in the system and the system's relative position to that of Proxima, but it loaded its list of approved names and chose one at random. McCready. 9C-512 fired four of its remaining 20 pods at the target satellite, each pod destined for a site of interest. Pods 1, 2, and 4 all headed for craters. Pod 3, on the other hand, headed for the bottom of a rocky peak. Pod 3, a spider-looking thing, bounced gently on its ten spindly legs before lowering itself to the moon's surface. 
A slot retracted in the pod, and a robot crawled out from the pod's belly. 9C-512 monitored the dog-sized robot as it trundled over the rocky surface into the cliff wall that rose 20 meters to a sheer cliff, before becoming a more gentle incline as the peak continued rising to a maximum height of 200 meters. The robot extended a sensor array, placed it against the stone, and activated the tool. The array sent out a powerful burst of energy against the rock, waited for echoes to return, and transmitted the results to 9C-512 using its pod scoms. 9C-512, not sentient and therefore incapable of excitement, marked the results as extremely likely, and continued monitoring the four robots and analyzing their conclusions. With every analysis, 9C-512 continued to update its recommendations. After five days of testing, it sent its findings in a single quantum message, which was all it had the power to initiate. In order to fit the message into the minuscule bandwidth, it reduced the fidelity of the reports to their most basic assumptions and evidence, leaving out extraneous information and speculations. The report said nothing of the other objects that shared McCready's orbit. The report said nothing about the debris field or the ice giants. The report contained no warnings. Because of the loss of fidelity, the report didn't even contain Robot 3's record of a micro-radiation burst from inside the peak. If you want more information and to take a look at my wares, visit shadowpublications.com or follow the link in the show notes. With that, I am out of here. Be safe, have a great week, and we'll talk again real soon. Cheers.